Uh, well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks to Antra for uh, allowing me to try and speak to you today and promote what it is that we do. And, and I'm hoping that uh, after today, there will be more students perhaps join engineering uh, through land based engineering. The uh, land based engineering is a is an opportunity for all people. You don't have to be have come from farming or come from the rural sector. You don't have to be a boy. You can, you can be a young girl, and um, you can you can come from a town. You don't have to. You don't really have to come from the rural area at all. There's a there's an opportunity for anybody to join land based engineering. The uh, land based engineering is basically looking after all the machinery that exists in the rural environment. So these other industries you've been hearing about, agriculture, aquaculture, uh, forestry, all these industries involve machinery of some description and it has to be not just looked after, it needs to be designed, it needs to be manufactured, it needs to be tested and it needs to be um, repaired in the field and serviced in the field. Um, none of these Anybody from land-based engineering can do any one of these jobs. So, the required attitude and skills that you need, pretty much, coming from school, we're looking for people with skills in specifically maths and science. You don't need to be good at maths and science, but you need to be interested in it. So. Perhaps you've not done well at school, but you like, you're interested in anything scientific or anything engineering-wise, any of these things, there'll be a position for you in land-based engineering. We're also looking now for people with IT skills or anybody interested in IT. Informa information technology is right into our industry. Uh, nearly everything we do has a computer attached to it now. It's only the real, it's only uh, machines from 20 or 30 years ago, which are still there, that we do look after. Uh, but nearly everything now has, uh, uh, requires IT. We've got guys <coughs> um, uh, putting diodes in the wiring looms when things don't work. We're having to diagnose these problems. S in many cases, the manufacturers themselves don't know why the machine doesn't work. So our guys are more skilled than the guys who design and make these equipment. So we're not talking about people who are the underachievers of the world, we're talking about high achievers that come to our industry. So there's a, a misconception in my mind that anybody who works with their hands uh, isn't as skilled or isn't worth as much as somebody who can sit behind a desk and operate a computer. I think that's wrong. I think it's the complete opposite. I think if you can, if you can go out to uh, a car or a tractor that out there that doesn't start, that doesn't work, and you can make it work, then you're a really valuable part of the community. Um, it's very important uh, in engineering that you do obtain qualifications. The qu any engineering qualification that you that you acquire in the uh, in the industry will allow you to transfer these skills into any engineering industry. So you might be, you might have come from the rural environment and you might think, well, <coughs> I would like to fix tractors, for instance. You enter that industry, you've been in it for five or six years. Now the whole world is opened up to you and you see, I, I could be building these things, I could be designing these things. Well, you can transfer your skills and your qualifications that you've got here, and then you can move into, you could be working anywhere in the world, in Germany, America, um, Finland, you could be designing the machines of the future. So just because you've started off training to work on forestry equipment, for instance, doesn't mean to say that that's what you'll be doing for the rest of your life. You could end up working in Australia, building wine harvesting equipment. You could do anything you want with the qualifications that you gain from Lantra. <clears throat> Employers also recognise any of these qualifications that you have 
it's much easier from my point of view. We employ people on a fairly regular basis, and it's much easier if somebody comes to me with uh, an engineering qualification from Lantra. For one, if they've not been put through it by a, an employer already, it shows initiative. It shows that you went out and did something yourself. Uh, from my point of view, that counts for a huge amount from somebody that, if somebody comes to us just wanting us to train them, as opposed to somebody who's actually started their training themselves, the person who started their training themselves has, has shown a, a skill that we want, somebody that shows initiative and somebody that potentially, if they're faced with a problem, is going to look to a way to overcome it. Um, these qualifications can also fast track you up the ladder. Um, if you start with, uh, with no qualifications, if you just enter the industry and then try and get the qualifications later, it's a, maybe a slower path to move in, up an organisation. Technology, the, t the amount of technology that's being used in industry is nearly beggar's belief. Uh, we have, uh, last month I had a company coming to me asking me if I could promote their robotic feeding system. So this is a, a system where uh, we would just, the, the farmer, somebody like John, would just fill bins of food and then press a button and walk away and this robot would mix the feed, would uh, deliver it into a little uh, trolley, a robotic trolley, it would drive up, it's, uh, it would come out and it would feed the sheep and when it was empty it would go back and refill itself and then carry on and feed all the sheep. And uh, well I looked at it and I thought well where are we going next? Um, <laughs> it's years on Friday. <laughs> Wouldn't be good for your alcohol problem. <laughs> um, that tractor outside, it's uh, it's not quite driverless, but uh, the, theoretically the driver can take it to the field, press a button, and that will go up and down and do all the work for him. He's got to be in it so that um, if it, something goes wrong or somebody walks out in front of it, it doesn't run him over. But uh, we have that technology now. Um, the mo it can be monitored from Finland <laughs> where it's made. If something goes wrong, the call can come in to us in, uh, over there in Dingwall. I'll tell us that there's a problem with the tractor even before it's stopped. It's, uh, um, we've got, in, in agriculture certainly, I don't know about forestry, but we've now got targeted application of uh, nutrients and chemicals onto the crops. And that's done by GPS, it's done by the machine altering, um, the, it's rate of spread of the material in it. Now, all that technology has to work. Somebody has to design it. Somebody has to install it. And somebody has to fix it when it goes wrong. And these are the people that we are needing to come into our industry. Young people that understand how this equipment works. We can train them how to uh, fix it. We can train them how to operate it. We can train them how to install it. But I'm sure you can understand that the sort of people that would be involved in that are not the under underachievers in school. It's really highly skilled people that we're looking for. And the remuneration is there for them. It's not a, a low-skilled, low-paid industry that we're in. It's highly skilled and highly paid. We have, just, we have GPS, radar, laser, optical analytics already in, in regular use in agriculture and forestry. Your forestry harvesters are telling the sawmill what they're cutting, they're telling them the dimensions of the logs that they're cutting. The sawmill, the guy at the sawmill's putting in his computer that he's wanting logs three metres long, and that's what the harvester cuts all the way. So the sawmill knows what the harvester cut that day, and they know what they're going to get in, and they can direct the harvester to cut what they want. So the, the technology is phenomenal, and it's only improving, and it's only it's reducing waste, it's uh, making the, the operator's job easier so he's not so stressed, work isn't so hard. <clears throat> the opportunities for progression, I've touched on them a, a little bit 
before and as much as with a land-based engineering qualification, the world's your oyster. You might decide that, um, that the rural economy isn't for you and you want to go into the oil industry. Your skills that you've learned in agriculture and, or land, any land-based engineering will transfer easily. The land-based engineering tends to cover nearly every single aspect of specialised engineering that there is. There's nearly every different type of equipment is in regular use. In other industries, the, the equipment is maybe just bigger or doesn't have wheels on it, but the actual technology is exactly the same. So to direct a, a young person into land-based engineering <coughs> is potentially opening up the world to them. To direct them into a specific aspect of engineering. You can be directed into civil engineering and pretty much that's where you're going to be for the rest of your life in civil engineering. So civil engineering exists in land-based engineering. In, a, in a, a small format, some of it will be covered. Some There'll be designs of sheds, designs of bridges, all that sort of stuff will be covered to a small degree in land-based engineering. And as a young person, in your early 20s, it would be easy to, relatively easy to move into civil engineering from that side, from that base, if you wanted to. But equally, there's, there's uh, mechanical engineering, um, software engineering, all these things are already involved in, in land-based engineering. So, I suppose it's about awareness, and that's the real reason I came here today, was I was told that, that the sorts of people who can encourage more people into the industry are going to be here, that's you guys. It's, uh, I believe that my industry is a, is a well-kept secret. Nobody really knows what we do. I'm sure most of you, or some of you, live here in, in the Highlands, and you'll be driving past the very equipment that I'm talking about, and never, you'll, you'll never think of, about what, what actually happens with it, or who looks after it, or, or does it break down. It's never a question there, I suppose, it's because our cars don't break down, we just think that things don't break down. But uh, I think it's really important, for the last 20 years there's been a serious underinvestment in bringing people into land-based engineering. None of the, the uh, businesses such as mine have really been taken on apprentices in any, uh, to any huge degree. The oil industry has sucked away the best people that we had uh, with, the lure of, with, of, with the lure of high wages. However, an awful lot of these people have come back to the industry because working on oil rigs not, not the, it's not what everybody wants to do. But uh, generally speaking in engineering, it's not been seen as, the, as an industry that people want to go into. I think it's possibly because um, most of our guys are going to be working with their hands. However, the opportunities in engineering are huge. If you go to Europe, places like Germany and Austria, there's, there's it's a career path that, that, uh, that many people want to get into. They're much more aware of the opportunities in engineering and how important it is. It's a uh, We've lost an awful lot of our companies that designed and, and, and made equipment, but certainly with, in the next year we're going to have Brexit. I really don't know what it will bring. I think the opportunities will be massive, and I think potentially we could be producing, designing, building an awful lot more of our, of our demand for equipment here. So. I really need you guys to promote the industry an awful lot better. I hope I've done a little bit of it, and I really hope that uh, if any of you have any questions later, uh, that we can we can go through them. So basically, in short, why would you want to join land-based engineering? There's a high degree of job satisfaction. There's nothing better than having something that's broken and being able to fix it. And the more complicated that that is and the fact that you can fix it makes you feel an awful lot better. It's a really healthy lifestyle. Working in a rural, rural environment, it's a beautiful place to live and work. And uh, people don't seem to get too stressed in, in my business. Um, our customers get stressed, but we don't get too stressed. <laughs>
the training is, most of the training is in job training. I know student debt is a big thing now and I would hate to have to uh, go into an education course where I thought I was going to have a massive debt at the end of it. Most land-based engineering training would be uh, in-job training and potentially you could enter the workplace and then train later. Um, and I suppose lastly, there's unfilled posts right now. Thanks very much.